so you want to run a personal best. You want to reach new levels of fitness. You want to run faster, run longer. You know, maybe there's other aspects of fitness that you want to improve. The point is, if you're going to get there, you need to do the training necessary to reach that fitness level, right? Well, that makes sense, obvious uh, statement. Now, what if I could do more training though? What if I could do Elliot Kipchoge's training? He's the world record holder in the marathon, does some epic uh, training. What if I just did that? Like I just went out and started doing exactly the same as Elliot Kipchoge and I sustained that for months on end. Would I get better? Heck yes, I would get a lot better. In fact, I would get a lot better doing that than I would doing what I'm doing now. But can I do that? And the answer is no. There's no way that I can do Elliot Kipchoge's training now. It's just no way. Even if I was able to do it, obviously there are lots of other factors. It's like how long have you done that training for? 10 years? 20 years? Now we're talking, you know, long consistency over many, many years. And there's genetic factors, obviously, and then there's age as well. So I'm not saying that anyone d doing the same training as Kipchoge would run as fast as Kipchoge. But if anyone did that sort of training or just any elite runner type of training, they would get very fast uh, at running. It's just that's obvious. But there's one big problem, and that is that you cannot just go out and do that sort of training because you'd get injured or overtrained. Uh, it's just not possible to sustain that sort of training without building up to it gradually for many years, if not a decade or more. So what I'm trying to get at today is that you got to realize that it's not just about training for your next goal. It's not just about doing the training necessary to reach a certain fitness level, certain performance level. Let's say you want to go uh, below a certain time. You want to run sub X time for whatever distance. Uh, you need to do this sort of training to get there. Um, okay. It's not just about the training you're doing to reach that level. It's also about the training that you're doing in order to be able to handle the training that you're going to need to do in order to reach a certain reach a certain level. All right, so we're talking about training to train. And training to train is slightly different than training to perform. All right, um, because training to train is about building a body that can handle uh, the training necessary. And part of that is, of course, doing as a runner lots of easy mileage, easy kilometrage, just logging hours of running, which of course will directly contribute to your fitness development right there and then and will contribute to your next PR. But it's also going to contribute to building your resilience, right? Strengthening those tendons, muscles, bones, increasing your bone density and also endocrine factors, hormones, blood, you know, just getting your body used to training, um, getting yourself fit, getting yourself athletic, which will allow you to then later stack more training on top of that and keep building, all right? So it's about building stone for stone, right? You're literally, you're building a house. Uh, that's what uh, Renato Canova, famous marathon coach, likes to talk about, building your aerobic house, you know? And building your house takes a lot more focus and energy than maintaining it, all right? So when you're building your house, which according to Canova takes like 10 years, of dedicated training. I'm talking elite level now, but even as, uh, at, the, at the more lower performance levels than elite, it still applies. You know, you need to build your, not only your fitness, but your tolerance to training. Um, because if I had the tolerance now, I don't, but if I did have the tolerance to be able to handle elite level Kipchoge style training right now, I would, I would, I'd get so freaking fast, right? Because being someone who does that training, no matter their genetics or age or whatever, anyone who does that training and can handle it will get very fast. Not necessarily as fast as Kipchoge, of course. The question then, for especially at the elite level, for a lot of runners becomes not necessarily who can run the fastest, although in the end that's what it's about, 
but it's who can train the best, who can train the most and the best, who can handle the training necessary. So if someone stays injury free for a long period of time, they're better able to do the training that's necessary and their performance in the subsequent season is usually very good. Whereas if they get injured and they lose consistency, they're not able to do the training and subsequently their performance drops. So training to train is a key aspect of anyone's running system. I think it should be. And that, all, that includes, as I said already, a lot of kilometers, just building that aerobic base and certainly developing that speed, you know, regular strides, regular speed training, uh, periods of the year where you focus on speed training perhaps, and obviously lots of threshold training, some VO2 max, you know, depends on the, on the distance you're training for and where you're at and all that, but like just general running training, right? But there's also all that extra stuff, the, 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 the supplemental training, I like to call it. It's the strength training, it's the heavy lifting, it's the prehab, it's the proprioception, the balance, um, maybe even doing other sports, right? And doing movements that are outside of your normal repertoire as a runner, building your athleticness, becoming more athletic means that you're probably also going to move better and be more injury free, right? At the top level or when you're in peak specific training before a race, you're probably going to cut out a lot of that just to give yourself only running to focus on and your body needs only that to get very sharp and specific for a race. But on other parts of the year, you're doing all those things and it's not necessarily because it's directly making you a better runner, although a lot of it will, but it's because it's going to make you a more resilient runner. Uh, you're training to train. That's it. Um, are you training to train? Let me know in the comments. I'm certainly training to train. I, I, in, a, in a way, I am focused on specific goals now, but I'm really focused a lot on what, where can I be in like three, four, five years? That's what I'm really excited about. Where can I be in like five years? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, for me, it's about the journey and the training more than it is about the goal itself. But I'd like to see where I can be in five years and to get there I need to do good training now in order to handle uh, next year's training, right? And like that you stack on top, uh, more training on top of, of the old training and, and get better and better and better and be able to handle more and more and more training. That's it. Check out my coaching link in the description. Do sign up for that if you're interested in guidance on your running journey, reach your PBs, that sort of thing. Um, subscribe, of course, if you want more videos about stuff like this. And I hope you're doing well and having an awesome day. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.